Hey there, YouTubers. Thank you for tuning in. This is Daniel Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. We're back at it again. Um, we have an empty workbook here. I'm still working on the test one procedure here. I have erased the cells and range objects that we have previously been working on. Today we're going to talk about um, a simple loop. Uh, we're going to use the for next um, procedure and I really don't have a better term for that. Um, we're going to talk about variables very seriously. Um, we're going to use X again. I use X all the time. It's simple and I remember it all the time. Uh, we're going to use X as our first variable. And, and just keep in mind, this can be any variable you'd like. You can have blah to be equal to 1 or blah to be equal to the word blah or anything. Um, let's go ahead and run this. Oh, I, di I did say I wanted to talk to you about the stop, using the stop. Um, so what, I, what we're going to do right now, let's go ahead and run this, and you'll notice that it's going to stop at your stop marker um, instead of proceeding to the end and then further more, you know, stopping everything. So if I hit play, uh, you notice it's already run everything to this point. So blah will actually equal 1. Blah is my variable. Blah is equal to 1. And we've stopped instead of continued and finished off our procedure. We stopped right here. And uh, sometimes you might put little stoppers in there. Be sure to take them out later. You'll be sorry. <laughs> you can put them in there to stop it. If you wanted to see uh, what's going on, why is it not working at this point right here? What is all the what are all the variables equal at this point? So that's how you use the stop. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to change that to X again so that we can work with x and do a simple loop. Right now x equals 1 and we're going to use that in just a moment. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the for and next feature that I have learned. So you could say for x, notice that's our variable, for x equals 1 all the way to let's say 10. For x equals 1 to 10. When I hit enter it's going to clear that up. Uh, you notice these are words are in blue. That means that they have some power to them. And I'm going to hit enter a few times. And then I'm going to say next x. Next variable name. We could put blah here and blah here if we had already planned on blah being equal to 1 and furthermore uh, 2 and 3 and 4 and all the way up to 10. That's what we're going to do when we run this. So we talked about the cells object. We're going to go ahead and use cells. And when I open the parentheses, I'm going to put x in there. Um, that's because x is going to change. Every time we go through this, it's going to say use the next x. That means increment it by 1. So it'll be 2 next time we go around. And then next time, next x is going to be 3. And all the way up until 10. This is going to be very exciting, I promise you. So we're telling it cells x comma column let's say column one okay um, we'll have that equal to how about x ooh now it's getting interesting um, what I'm going to do <clears throat> right now is every time I have a for next statement I like to uh, I like to tab this out so it makes sense what's going on everything inside this little box here from here to here has been tabbed so that people know uh, this is with this is with contained within these boundaries here and here and you'll learn uh, you'll you really learn when you start playing around with this that using tabs correctly will help you be able to read what's going on instead of just a big blur of everything lined up so let's do that now I'm gonna go ahead and start debugging you probably have no idea what's gonna go on but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put we'll start with cell 1 comma 1 that's a1 it'll be equal to 1 and then next time around uh, well let's just do it I'm gonna hit F8 so right here we've just turned X equal to 1 now X equals 1 to 10 Oh, I guess I didn't even have to, to do that part there because this is defining the variable right here. X equals 1 to 10. So first of all, cells, and when I have over X, uh, no matter where, it's 1. So let's do that. Cells uh, 1 comma 1 equals the value of 1. Let's hit F8, and sure enough, 1, 1 
uh, row 1, column 1 is A1. Now when I go to next X, you look at X, and now it's become 2 because we're counting from 1 to 10. So now let's let's see. Oh, this is going to be equal to 2. And sure enough, it was row 2, column 1. Oh, excuse me. Let me dismiss my email notifier. Okay. Moving on, we're gonna we're gonna see here that each time it increments at x, it's going down one row and turning and turning it into that value. So I'm gonna go through here. In fact, I'll hit F5 to just complete the macro, and we see that it sure enough it did that. Uh, I'm gonna erase that. Now, what if we uh, what if we wanted to make it a little more interesting? Okay, what if we wanted to say that it is equal to x plus 2 each time. So let's follow that really quick. When I hit, uh, when I go into this, it gives it the value of 1. So this is going to equal 1 plus 2. That's going to be the value of 3 right there. And we move to the next one. And uh, we're going to, we're going to this cell, uh, 3 comma 1, that's going to be right here. However, we're telling it we want it to be 3 plus 2, x plus 2. So each time we have it to be that. We can use multiplication, we can use anything that we want in here. Um, so we, let's do that. Let's do times 3. Okay, each time we loop it, it's going to go and say x times 3. 1 times 3 is 1. The next one is going to be 2 times 3 is 6. Then 9 then 12, 15, 18, and I'll hit F5 to complete that. But here, just quickly, it blasted through some multiplication. It can blast through extremely complicated um, math. Uh, that's the nature of Excel. So that's, uh, that's a real quick loop. Of course, you can have text if you'd like, and that will come in handy sometimes. Um, I'll hit F5 and show you that it immediately uh, went... It, it went one at a time, but it goes so fast you can't see it. I'll do it one at a time just to show you. F8, cell is, right now it's 1, now it's 2, 3, and so on. So, until the end. So that's it'll interact with numbers and math and all kinds of awesome things. Uh, then, if you're running reports, which eventually we're going to get to that point, you're going to have multiple things going on whenever we meet a certain condition. So um, let's let's do something interesting here. We will do something in column two right here. So cells x comma two. That means column two. So we're going to be using column B as well. It is going to be equal to well yeah let's do that. Let's do x times fifteen. Okay. So in the first column, it's always going to say blah. Or we could always have it have today's date or something. Um, let's put date. Now, if I type date in here, you notice it capitalized itself. That tells you something. It tells us that Excel has a, a predefined variable called date. You can't mess with that one. This always equals today's date. In a, so let's do that really quick. We're going to go through. Um, I'm going to go slow. Uh, 1, 1, that's A1 is equal to today's date. And you notice when I hover over that, it automatically knows what I'm wanting to do. Oop. Make this a little big enough. So, and then when I go to this one, we're going to cells um, 1, comma 2. That means row 1 and second column. That's going to be B2, B1 uh, is going to be equal to 1 times 15 because X is 1 right now. So you see that there? 15. Now when I go to next X, I hit F8. Now it's, of course, 2. So we've got... Um, this is going to be the date each time. And sometimes you might want it to be this today's date every time you run a certain macro or whatever. Uh, equals x times 15. Well, x is 2 currently, and now it's going to be... And so I'll go ahead and run that to the end, but it put today's date in column 1, and it put whatever we wanted to increment times 15 each time. So that's something fun you could do. And, of course, you know, I think you know, that you can manipulate dates using plus minus uh, if we wanted to use tomorrow's date of course that'd be date plus one and that would be uh, tomorrow's date so let's run that if we wanted to always be tomorrow's date 
you would run that, and, and then it says 218 instead of 217. If we wanted to use next week date plus 6, I believe that would take us to a week from today. So that should take us to the 24th of February. So let's try that. Let's see here. I'm going to hit F5 and just run it. Nope. Oh, oops, oh. Date plus 7. Let's run it again. F5. Okay, so the 24th, that's that's next Sunday. So if you wanted it to be a week from today in column 1, and if you wanted it to be whatever you want there in column 2, that's how you run uh, one of those. You could, furthermore, if you have a lot of columns, if you're running a custom report, you might want that to equal the word pizza, or, you know, there's a lot of things that you might want it to equal. And I use a lot of if-then statements. You're going to see those later. I'm going to go ahead and run this. You see pizza is now in column 3 because we put current row plus always third column. You can put variables in there. We're going to talk about loops within loops and all kinds of fun stuff. Thank you for tuning in again. God bless you. And thank you for watching Excel VBA is fun video.